Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please join us for Nasimadev prayers. Hare Krishna, Nasimadev Chatudashi ki jai, Nasimadev appearance day ki jai. भगवान की जय प्रहलाद महाराज की जय शिला प्रभुपाद की जनंत कोरी वैश्य विंद की जय निताय गो प्रेम अनंदे हरी हरी बो हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज नस्य मदेव अपेरेंस डे की जय सो टुडे विल बी डूइंग अ शॉर्ट बट फिल्ड कंसंट्रेटेड क्लास बिकॉज वी वांट टू सेलिब्रेट दिस डे इन द मूड ऑफ प्रेयर्स इन द मूड ऑफ ह्यूमिलिटी विद द मूड ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड इन द मूड ऑफ डिवोशन with all our affection attraction attention absorption and you know focusing on the supreme personality of godhead who appeared to save his devotee so important lessons are coming up today so let's start with the guru prati namo om vishnu padaya krishna prishthaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swami niti namine नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे ओम ज्ञानतिमृंद से ज्ञानंजनाशलाकया चक्षुन्मील येना तस्म श्री गुरव नम 
मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लंघयते गिरिम यत कृपा तदहम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारणम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो प्रहलाद महाराज और हिरण कश्यप के जो है नरेशन ये आता है सेवेंथ कैंटो ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम और इसका एक्चुअली बिगनिंग सेकेंड कैंटो से ही शुरू हो चुका है और थर्ड कैंटो में स्पेसिफिकली उसका डिस्क्रिप्शन भी आता है और फिफ्थ कैंटो में भी आता है सो वील बी टेकिंग अप यू नो द वेरी बेसिस so let's cover that very basis which causes this inquiry right because there is a great conversation going on between maharaj parikshit and shukdev goswami maharaj parikshit is fasting for 7 days until death because he was cursed that in 7 days he would die so he had decided not to eat anything he gave up all his kingdom and he was at the bank of ganges yamuna river jo hai in the, in the past hastinapur ka jo corner mein tha to wahan pe he was Uh, on the bank of ganges he was uh, you know fasting until death so the great sages came and shukdev goswami he was describing shrimad bhagavatam his narrating shrimad bhagavatam to parikshit maharaj and in the sixth canto near the end jo chhata uh, you know wo hai uh, canto usme kis tarah se diti you know indra ko kill karne ke liye to kill indra she wanted to get a son so she pleased her husband kashyapamuni and then she said i have want to have a son who would kill indra now kashyapamuni was in trouble because indra is also his son his another wife elder sister of diti is aditi and indra is aditya right son of aditi and he is the 11th son of aditi of course the jesh son kon hai sun god vivaswan aditi ke so he was thinking that my one wife is asking to get a son who would kill my other son from another wife from my other wife so at that time he actually says to diti that please engage in devotional service and he told her the whole process of how to perform pumsa pumsa vana ritualistic ceremony and she performed it as per the instruction now aditi told indra that she is performing this ceremony so that she gets a son who would kill you so indra fearing his death right so everyone has fear of death even king indra has fear of death fearing his death he said okay i will trick her he starts serving diti by bringing various kind of oblations for the sacrifice with the mood that as soon as he gets an opportunity he will kill the baby in the womb and it just so happened that one night diti went to bed without cleaning her mouth so the mouth was impure so using that passage he went into her womb and he saw the baby in as an embryo right so he cut that embryo into seven you know pieces and then suddenly what he sees he sees that it has split into seven children he is amazed and they are saying why are you killing us we are your brothers indra we are your brothers why are you killing us and indra said do not worry but then he had one motive to save his life so he uses vajra to cut each of the baby into seven for the pieces and what does he see seven times seven there are 49 babies so he's surprised that this is the effect of him trying to kill a baby when the mother is engaged in devotional service rakhe krishna mare ke mare krishna rakhe ke if lord krishna wants to protect someone then who can kill and if lord krishna wants to kill someone then who can save him so again indra realizing that this is all ordained by the supreme personality of godhead he you know comes out so when diti she wakes up next morning what does she see that indra is standing with 49 of her sons maruts and they are actually very friendly and then she says actually i was thinking of killing you that's why i was performing this ceremony and indra says and i was thinking of killing the baby but you know they i have existed he there is the whole incident and so they became friends at that point and he says that i would like to take with them with me and place them in an exalted position in my assembly so diti becomes happy and from that point onwards the animosity goes away now when parikshit maharaj hears this he is very surprised because he also was thinking that 
Lord is equal to everyone, right? So this is where we will discuss this amazing verse that appears in Bhagavad Gita. Samoham sarva bhuteshu namay dveshu asti na priyaha ye bhajanti to maam bhaktya mai te teshu chapyaham Samoham sarva bhuteshu, right? So Lord Krishna, what is he saying to Arjun? He is revealing to Arjun that I am equal to all, samoham, equal to sarva bhutashi, all living entities. Na me deveshya asti, na priya. And no one is, you know, and envy no one, and no one is dear to me, right? Na priya, priya also refers to dear, you know, very close or, you know, affectionate. So here, but, you know, first line is this, but it is very interesting when the center is saying, I like to do this, 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 but, so actually the real essence starts after that but when ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya that tu refers to but so that is where he says Lord Krishna is saying ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya but those who you know render transcendental service unto me right in devotion with love with gratitude with affection with friendly attitude in a humble state of mind being tolerant to all the external conditions one who is engaged you know in devotional service transcendental service unto me to please me as i want so again anukulena krishna anushila that's how a devotional service is performed is a friend in me mai te te shu chapyaham is in me and i am also in them right so again, like we know how to be, sometimes people say, okay, we understand the friend, but how can somebody be in someone? So Lord is in our heart, right? We all understand this. And when we are serving the Lord, then he, he is also thinking of us. So he is saying they are in me. So even he is meditating. He is thinking of, he is remembering not just our service, but our service attitude and we become very dear to him. And so he says, I am also a friend to him. So again, he is a Jashatru. He has no enemies. He does not consider anyone his enemies. He is, you know, Moktaram Yagatapsam Sarvalok Maheshwaram Suhidam Sarva Bhutanam. Suhidam Sarva Bhutanam is, is the well wisher, he is the best friend, he is the benefactor of all living entities. And so we understand that Bhagwan is the one who is the one who is जो उनके भक्त हैं उनकी तरफ उन वो अफेक्शनेट हैं वो अपने भक्तों की रक्षा करते हैं एंड दिस इंसिडेंट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस बिकॉज़ व्हेन परिषद महाराज इज आस्किंग दिस क्वेश्चन दैट भगवान तो सबके लिए बराबर हैं फ्रॉम दिस पर्सपेक्टिव राइट बट देन शुक्रदेव गोस्वामी इज सेइंग दैट यस यू नो because Pariksit Maharaj ka question kya hai? Ke Indra ke jo enemies hai Bhagwan, why does he take the position to kill all the enemies of Indra? Right? Why is that? Because Indra is a devotee. That's why Lord is protecting him. Let's look at Vraj Leela. Waha pe kya hua? Jab Bhagwan ne, you know, Indra ne apne samarata ka clouds bheje. At that time, Lord Krishna, did he kill Indra? No. Many of the demons, they had just come, they couldn't even introduce themselves. Apna pariche bhi nahi de paaya tha, Bhagwan ne unko maa diya. Lekin yaha Indra, keval Bhagwan ko hi nahi, sare Brajwasiyo ko, sare Gauss ko, Gopis ko, Gopa friends, all of Brajwasis, he was trying to devour them with these Samvartika clouds. But then, Lord, he forgave him and he told him to be in his proper position to perform his duties. So again, that's where we see uh, Giridhari. He picks up the, uh, you know, uh, Giriraj on his pinky of his left hand. So here we see such amazing uh, pastime. So, jab ye inquiry hai Parikshan Maharaj ki, ke Bhagwan, why is he partial towards Indra? And then, Shukdev Goswami, he smiles and he says that actually Lord is not partial at all. He is equally disposed. And then he starts narrating a pastime that Yudhishthi Maharaj had asked the same question of Devashi Narad. Now Yudhishthi Maharaj had asked from the perspective of Shishupal. 
मैन लॉर्ड कृष्णा राष्ट्रीय यज्ञ में अपने सुदर्शन से शिशुपाल का वध कर देते हैं तो शिशुपाल जो की जो सोल होती है वो बॉडी से निकल के इमीजिएटली लॉर्ड कृष्णा में मर्ज की जाती है तो ये तो लोगों को विजिबल होता है विच इज सायुज्य मुक्ति राइट तो सायुज्य मुक्ति लोग देखते हैं लेकिन उसके बाद ये नहीं देखते हैं कि दैट लिविंग एंटिटी शिशुपाल वॉज एक्चुअली जय एंड सो ही इज अ डोर कीपर सो ही गोज बैक होम बैक टू गॉड हेड एंड देयर ही इज इन हिस पोजिशन वेटिंग फॉर हिज नेक्स्ट पास टाइम विच इज वेन ही अपियर्स एज अगेन And after Shishupal, so previously he had appeared as uh, Hina Kashipu, later as Ravan, and now as Shishupal. And then Chetan and Mahaprabhu have passed time. And Jagai Madhai ki tarah se ye dono brothers aate hain, Jay and Vijay. And so they get even exalted position from that perspective. So, ham isme jab Shukdev Goswami ye narrate kar rahe hain ke Shishupal ko jab merge karte hue dekha to Yudhishthi Maharaj was surprised. Arey bhai itna ho bhag ye. भगवान को पाना तो बहुत मुश्किल है और शिशुपाल जिसने बचपन से भगवान को ब्लैसफेम किया है एनवीएस रहा है वो जाके भगवान में मच किया तब देवशी नारद ही सिंग्स अ प्रेयर इज लाइक सिंग दिस इज अमेजिंग दैट व्हेन वन इज डिवोशनल दे मे नॉट बी सो कंसंट्रेटेड इन देयर थिंकिंग कॉन्स्टेंटली इतना स्ट्रांगली थिंक नहीं कर सकते जबकि कोई एनवीएस है कोई एनिमी है कोई एंग्री है दैट पर्सन कैन think of the lost ship with great concentration so he's actually glorifying a demon shishupal saying that he was always thinking of lord krishna from his childhood and so being concentrated man mana bhava right he was constantly thinking of the lost ship so he attained the lord because lord is absolute so either you think of him in friendly mood or in you know envious mood or angry mood you know his effect he is equally disposed so his effect is the same so that was the reason but then he also narrates that shishupal was previously you know in his previous birth he was ravan and his previous to that birth he was hanakashipu so again he starts talking about this story about prahlad maharaj and hanakashipu as how diti you know at dusk time jab sham ho jati hai na suryast ke baad वो अपने हस्बैंड के पास अप्रोच करती है बिकॉज शी वॉज सींग के हर अदर सिस्टर्स उनके तो बेटे हो रहे हैं लेकिन इनको भी बेटा चाहिए तो अपने पति को उस समय अप्रोच करती हैं जब वो अपने इवनिंग ऑब्लेशन कर रहे थे और उस समय वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस श्रीमद भगवतन क्लास में कि किस तरह से ही एग्रीज टू हर बट देन आफ्टर वर्ड सी टेल्स अ दैट शी विल बी अ ट्विन सन्स एंड दे विल बी ग्रेट डीमस सो शी बिकेम वेरी मरोस बट देन ही सेज के उनका जो जो उनके जो जो दैत्य पुत्र होंगे दैत्य में सन्स ऑफ दिति वो असुर होंगे राइट डिमोनिक प्रोपेंसिटी होगी और उनको भगवान खुद यू नो मारेंगे तो शिव किम्स यू नो सम सेटिस्फाइड दैट वेन लॉर्ड कृष्ण किल्स समवन वेदर ही ब्लेसेस समवन और ही किल्स समवन बोथ पर्सनैलिटीज गो बैक होम बैक टू गॉड हेड सो थिंकिंग दिस वे शी वॉज प्लीज यू नो इन आर हार्ट एंड देन हिना काशी हिनाक्ष देव बॉन्ड देव ग्रेट disturbances all over the universe all bad planets like mars and you know saturn they became very powerful all the good planets like uh, jupiter and others their uh, potency became dim and there were all kind of disturbances and these two brothers were very powerful and we know lord varahadev kills hiranaksha and as soon as that happens you know kashyapu becomes very angry ab hiranaksha mein he's in anger he's thinking of lord vishnu he's saying that vishnu killed my brother hiranaksha by cheating taking the form of varaha and killing him this way so i want to find him and he conquered the universe but before conquering the universe shukracharya asked him to meditate and become immortal meditate on lord brahma to please lord brahma so he performed great austerities so again demons because they are so focused they can perform austerities with an extreme level of austerities so lord brahma when he comes he cannot see hena kashipu he sees that hena kashipu has been performing so severe austerities that his life was within the skeleton his body had been eaten up by the ants and see so lord brahma says nobody has performed such austerities in the past and no one in the future will also not perform such austerities why does he say that because if that becomes true at least the universe will not burn because of the fire that was rising out of the body of hena kashipu so and he by sprinkling water 
you know, Hiranyakashipu, by getting the water from the Kumandalu of Lord Brahma, he regains his body even more strong. Like Vajra ke just a strong body mil jata hai usko. Aur uske baad mein Lord Brahma bolte hai, ask for a boon. Hiranyakashipu says, make me immortal. Lord Brahma says, even I am not immortal. How can I give you something that I don't have? Ask me something else. And then Hiranyakashipu asks for this amazing, uh, you know, benediction that he cannot be killed during the day or during the night, inside the house or outside the house. He will be undefeated by any of the living entities created by Lord Brahma because he understands Lord Brahma is the creator. He is thinking he, he will not be killed by anything living or dead. He will not be killed by any astra shastra, you know, the weapons that are thrown and the weapons that are held in hands. All these combinations thinking that yes, this will make me immortal. And that he on the normal duration of time, right, that is the time aspects, the 12 months, he will not be killed. So again, Lord Brahma, after considering the whole situation, you know, says Tathastu, so be it. Or Uske Badbe, Hirakashipu, he starts raining uh, means havoc all over the universe. While he was doing tapasya, his wife, you know, Indra attacked his kingdom and he wanted to kill the baby in her womb. And at that time, as he was taking Hirakashipu's wife, at that time Devashi Narad came and he said, What are you doing? In a womb is a great devotee of the Lord. Hearing Devashi Narad's words, you know, Indra and the other demigods, they circumambulated, paid obeisances to his wife and the baby in the womb, and they left. And Devashi Narad took her at his ashram, where he, you know, imparted Vedic literatures again. When we talk about Vedic, Ved means knowledge, and of course the transcendental knowledge to her. So, but being a woman, she happened to have forgotten that, but the baby in her womb, Prahlad, he was listening, so he remembered it. So after Hinakashipu returns, Devashi Narad brings his wife, returns to him. He is very glad that Devashi Narad protected his wife, even though he knows that Devashi Narad is a devotee of Lord Vishnu. But this is a great favor done, so he does not affect, he does not create any trouble for Devashi Narad. But Devashi Narad is still troubled because of all the trouble Hinakashipu is causing. So now, Hinakashipu, he is very happy that he's, you know, he has become the emperor of the universe, the administrator of the universe. Even Indra, Agni, Surya, they are actually serving him like menial servants. During the reign of Hinakashipu, he may show that all yajna sacrifices are to be offered to him only, not to the demigods or to Lord Vishnu. Because his thinking was, if they are offered to him, he be, he'll become so powerful and the demigods will become less powerful. So that's the process of Yajna process that we study in our third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So again, that has been established by the Lordship. He tries to change it. So this is a demonic propensity. They try to create their own systems. Yet at the same time, Lord has his own arrangement for Hiranyakashipu. Now Hiranyakashipu goes all the way to Vaikuntha looking for the Lordship. He cannot find Lord Narayan is nowhere. Where can he be? And actually what has happened is that Lord has, was in his own heart. He was in his own heart. You know, and so, and Lord Vishnu, he reveals this in Padma Purana as well, that I was hiding in his heart and he was looking outside. So happiness, the Lordship is within us, the transcendental bliss is within us, but sometimes we are looking at outside. That's a big, um, you know, uh, illusion of Maya that we are looking for happiness outside while well, the supreme happiness is in our heart as super soul. And here, so when Prahlad Maharaj was going to school, Chanda and Amarka, the sons of Shukracharya were teaching him. So when he was brought in front of Hina Kashipu, nicely dressed by his mother, right, uh, by Prahlad's mother, Prahlad Maharaj came, so Hina Kashipu picks him up, places him on his lap. And he says, my dear son, tell me anything, right? A father says to a son, you know, you're just starting to go to school. What have you learned? Maybe the kid will say, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Those kind of basic things and the parents are very much enlightened. In the beginning, that's the stage, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, basic stuff. Whatever the child can say, parents become happy and they encourage the child with that thought. And what does the child say? Pahara Maharaj says, oh, king of the demons, those who have failed to control their mind, they should give it, you know, they should give up all this world and take to go to jungle. And Hirakashipu is thinking, oh, this is a small child. What does a child know? He's saying these things. 
Uh, it seems like some devotee is coming into the Gurukul and they're teaching this. So he's just repeating what he heard. So at that time, Hirakashipu tells Shanda Namarka, you know, you should protect the boundaries of your ashram. Don't let any of the devotees come in because they will pollute the children's mind. So again, children are innocent by nature. Thinking this, he hands them a uh, prahlad back so that they continue to teach him. Now, after some time, after thinking that they have taught Prahlad very well, they bring Prahlad in front of Hiranyakashipu. And this time Hiranyakashipu is asking his son. And at this particular time, second time, what has happened? At this time, Hiranyakashipu is thinking, I will ask him the best of knowledge because Shandana Marka had been teaching about how to be diplomatic, how to you know win over your enemies, how to be economically strong, how to rule over all living entities by subduing them under your you know control so at that time when he asks what does Prahlad Maharaj say shavanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atma nivedanam he is talking about the nine process of devotion service <laughs> here Kashipu loses his control he is like he is upset now right second time so he tells that my, this boy is actually a devotee of my enemy Vishnu. So kill him immediately. He doesn't even want to see this boy anymore. He understands that this is devotee of the Lord. So even though his own son, he becomes envious towards his own son. So his envy that was directed toward Lord Vishnu, he directs it toward Prahlad. Prahlad Maharaj was very humble. He was simply, you know, in a submissive mood was folding his hands and accepting whatever is coming his way, remembering the Lord all the time. By remembrance, he is protected. Or SMA, his jo soldiers, and they are trying to kill Prahlad by weapons. None of the weapons are able to pierce his body. They are trying to put him in front of a mad elephant, and the mad elephant comes and bows down and pays obeisances to Prahlad Maharaj. They throw him in a snake pit. Usko saapo ke bimb ke vaha pe dal dete hain. Kue mein jis pe, you know, serp bhare pade hain. Jis pe cobras or different type of snakes are there, poisonous snakes. None of the snakes harm Prahlad Maharaj. They throw him from a cliff. It doesn't hurt Prahlad Maharaj because Lord Vishnu is saving him. Rakhe Krishna maare ke, maare Krishna rakhe ke. So if somebody wants, you know, if Lord wants to protect someone, <coughs> who can destroy him? And... If Lord wants to kill someone, who can save him? So again, we see this uh, saying coming true. And then, at that time, these soldiers are bewildered. And Hiranyakashipu thinks that, okay, what others cannot do, maybe I have to do it myself. So he is calling Prahlad Maharaj. And amazingly, Shanda and Amarka were also there at this time. So Hiranyakashipu is wondering, how is this happening? So at that time, he was bewildered. So at that time, Shanda and Amarka, they approached him and said, Daitya Raj, don't do anything. You know, give us an opportunity. We will easily overcome this. Whatever pollution has happened in his mind, we'll brainwash him and make him a perfect devotee, well, perfect demon, right? So that way he will only understand how to be bad and how to, you know, subdue his enemies and he will have all kind of sense gratificatory thoughts and all kind of... Uh, ruling propensities and he will know how to use people against each other he will be expert in all kind of treachery and all kind of skills that asuras look for now hearing them and seeing their confidence hirakashipu agrees he says what's the harm let me try once more and at that time they take him so shanda and amarka take uh, prahlad maharaj apne ashram mein le jate hain usko unko sikhate hain ab prahlad maharaj jaise shanda amarka jate the right Sometimes teachers, they leave and the kids, you know, they start to make big brawl in the classroom. So Prahlad Maharaj sees all his friends are immediately playing different games and they're inviting Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj says, no, life, this human life is very rare and we should use this in devotional service. Now all the children are saying, but we have never seen you getting all this knowledge. And who's your spiritual master? He says, Devashi Narad is my spiritual master. And they say, Where did you, when did you get this knowledge? He said, when my mother was expecting me, I was in a womb. Then Devashi Narad imparted this knowledge. But being a woman, she forgot. But I remembered. So, you know, I want to share this amazing knowledge. So all these children, he's calling them sons of the demons. You should all, you know, 
focus on devotional service. Take to devotional service that will be beneficial for all of us. And so these boys, all of them, they see the wonderful nature of Pahlad Maharaj. And singing his devotion, means again, devotional songs and singing, uh, you know, playing with him, he, they start to again start serving the Lord Shiva. When Shandana see, oh, you know, they, from their thought, you know, again, demons, they're thinking, ke ek, uh, we got one devotee among the demons and this devotee is making all the demons as devotees. They become fearful. They take immediately Prahalat in front of Hiranya Kashyapa and say, we cannot do anything. So Hiranya Kashyapa realizes he could not kill Prahalat and all these, means again, his soldiers could not kill and even his teachers have given up. So there is no other solution but he has to be killed. But he was very fearful. Because he was thinking he had to perform great austerity to get this strength. Prahlad did not perform. He's just a five-year-old boy. Where is he getting this strength? So he asked this question. Where are you getting this strength of yours? Who is protecting you? Then Prahlad Maharaj says, My dear father, the source of my you know, abilities is the same as source of your abilities. All of our abilities are coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna. And Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Parushan Nishu, I am the ability in man. So, but hearing this, Hena Kashipu says, where is your Lord? Because he was always looking for Lord Vishnu to kill Vishnu. He was thinking that he will kill Vishnu and so he will avenge his brother's death. So at that time, Prahlad Mahal says, he's everywhere. Bhagwan Sarva Vyapi hai, har jaga hai. So Hena Kashipu says, is he also in this pillar? Just kind of like joking. Sometimes people give this kind of argument. So Prahlad Mahal says, yes, he's also in the pillar. Now, Hena Kashipu, Kashipu loses his composure. He takes out his sword and is about to kill Prahlad. And just before approaching Prahlad, he, you know, punches onto the pillar and the pillar bursts open. And then from there comes Lord Nasimadev. And Lord Nasimadev, seeing the amazing form of Lord Nasimadev, Hina Kashipu first is wonderstruck, right? He's shocked. But then he realizes that it is Vishnu only who has come in this form to kill me. And he, you know, being, even though he's a demon, he's also got this potency to fight as a fighter. So he starts fighting, but he said that as like moth rushes into the flame and loses itself, he vanished when he was, you know, in the effulgence of Lord Nasimhadev. They fought and we all know that Lord Nasimhadev, he kills Hinakashibu by making him lay down on his legs you know spreading him on his legs so he was neither in the air nor on the ground he did not kill him with uh, an astra shastra no, neither living nor dead objects he killed him with his nails and nails are said to be neither living nor dead he did not kill him during the day or in night he killed him during the dust time the time between the twilight time so in this way he you know maintained all the uh, benediction that he had received and further killed him and he wore his intestine as garlands now various demigods Lord Brahma Lord Shiva you know all Indra and all of the demigods and the residents of different priority systems they came and they were singing prayers to pacify Lord Nasimadev and at that time Lord Nasimadev he was not getting pacified so at that time Prahlad Maharaj was encouraged. Lord Brahma requested Prahlad Maharaj to go and pray and to pacify Lord Nasimadev. Prahlad Maharaj, when he approached Lord Nasimadev, he said, Well, such great personalities like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, you know, Siddha Lokas, the residents of Siddha Lokas, Gandharva Lokas, Charana Lokas, Pitra Lokas, they have been praying to you with all these exalted verses. And I'm just a boy, I'm just a you know, and I'm also born in a demonic family. So I have no qualification. And actually, Acharya has explained that this humility of Prahlad Maharaj is his greatest qualification. Because when we get knowledge, it should not make us proud, it should make us humble. We should realize that all this knowledge makes us understand our true position. And what is our true position? Jivara Surupuya Kishnera Nityadas, that we are eternal servant. And a servant serves Nitya Das. So again, we are eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
directly or indirectly, we are always serving. That is our nature. We cannot change our nature. Just like sugar will always be sweet. You cannot change the nature of sugar not to be sweet. If it's not sweet, we will not call it sugar. Salt is salty. right? If it's not salty, you won't call it salt. So that's the nature. So we have to understand. Right? Fire. Fire is a nature that it gives light and it is warm to touch. So again, that is the nature of fire. If it doesn't have any of these qualities, then you won't call it fire. So Prahlad Maharaj in a humble mood, he is praying that I have no qualification. And when he approaches, you know, Lord Nasimadev, Lord Nasimadev blesses him by placing his hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj. And immediately he is completely purified, Prahlad Maharaj, by the touch of the Lordship. And so he says that I am so lucky, right, I am so fortunate that Lord does not place his hand on the head of Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva or even you know, Goddess of Fortune, Lakshmi Devi, and he has placed his hand on me. So he is showing his gratitude to the Lordship, that Lordship is so wonderful, his causeless mercy, that even though I am born in a family of a demon, he is blessing me. So Lord even becomes more affectionate, he picks up Prahlad and places him on his lap. Prahlad Maharaj ko apni god mein bithate hain, aur jase ki batate hain na, ke how does a lion show his love towards the cow? By licking onto the cheek. So he is licking the cheeks of Prahlad Maharaj. He says, ask for something. Prahlad, I am very happy with you. So Prahlad Maharaj says, my dear Lord, I am your devotee. I am with my love, I am serving you. I am not a merchant. This, if give and take relationship, you know, that is a mercantile mindset. But I am a devotee, so, you know, I don't want anything. Now still Nasimhatev says, but please, Prahlad, I want to give you something. I can give you as much wealth you want. I can give you as much land you want. You know, I can make you uh, the emperor of you know many dweepers and all that. And he's giving him. I can give you siddhis. I can give you this. I can give you that. And Prahlad Bhaya says, "No, my dear Lord, I am just a devotee. I am. It, it is my love towards you that I serve you with." And so, hearing this. But seeing that Nasimha Dev, uh, Dev is constantly asking him, so he says, my dear Lord, if you want to give me something, then give me this. I know that my father, from a long time, up to his death, until his death, he was blaspheming, he was committing great offenses against you. So please forgive all that. Now Nasimha Dev is completely melting, seeing the heart of Prahlad. You know, a person who wanted to kill Prahlad, Prahlad is asking for him to be delivered. Nasima Dev smiles and says, My dear Prahlad, where a devotee like you is born, 21 generations are delivered. So again, we can experience Nasima Dev in our very life because in our very life when we are chanting the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, we can understand that Lord is dancing on our tongue, so we have the same benediction. So when we are dealing with the Lordship, when we are in touch with the Lordship, when we are hearing Him, right, His holy name, so His holy name is non-different from Him. Nama Chintamani Krishna Sachetanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuddho Nitya Mukta Abhidnatvam Nama Namino. Nama Chintamani Krishna's Lord, Lord's name is like Chintamani, which is desire stone, right? Sometimes referred to as touchstone. Touchstone is part of money, but sometimes being referred to as that. But it can de deliver all our desires, right? And Chaitanya Rasa he has, Lord has imbued all his potencies in his name. Purna Shuddha, it can completely purify us, Nitya Mukta, and can get us out of the entanglement of this material world, the three modes of material nature. Amidnatum nam namino and Lord's name is non different from the Lord Himself. So when we understand that we are in direct contact with the Lord, you know, we get the same benediction that Prahlad Maharaj is getting. And then Lord says that once I have touched, right, the moment I touched your father, he was completely purified. You know, giving joy to Prahlad Maharaj because Prahlad Maharaj is Pradukha Dukhi. So a devotee is sad when he sees others you know, in distress. And he wants benedictions for everyone. So at that time, Nasimha Dev is still saying, ask for something. So at that time, Prahlad Mahara says, I don't want anything for myself. I am worried about all these foolish people who don't take to devotional service. My dear Lord, please 
give them your costless mercy please give them benediction so that they become happy they they are able to return back home back to god and give them devotion give them inspiration so that is what is asking so it is for us prahama is asking all this and so Nasima Dev is still smiling. So again, we learn from this prayer of Prahlad Maharaj that a devotee does not want anything for himself, but is always seeking out for others' benefit. They are always working and acting to you know, spread the knowledge about the Lordship, his name form activities past tense. They want to glorify the Lord. They want to bring everyone in the shelter of the Lord, at the lotus feet of the Lord, so that everybody is delivered, everyone becomes happy, and everyone rejoices with transcendental bliss, which is like overflowing ocean. And so Nasimhatev prayer, uh, this again Nasim, Lord Nasimhatev, he is again very happy seeing the attitude of Prahlad Maharaj. And he is still asking that, my dear Prahlad, you know, you should ask for something more. So again, Lord is requesting Prahlad Maharaj. And in this particular, what is the third thing that Prahlad Maharaj is asking? Then if you want to give me something, my dear Lord, please give me the love so that I, again, by which I can serve my spiritual master, Devashi Narad. So again, a devotee is always ready to render service because his spiritual master is his life heirs. So again, as his life, so he is telling us that we should always be ready to render service to our spiritual master. And the best service that you can render to our spiritual master that we can render, Acharyas tell, is by preaching the glories of the Lord, by helping our spiritual master in their mission, by engaging ourselves with love, with devotion, with gratitude in devotional service, by following the four regulatory principles, minimum chanting of 16 rounds on a daily basis, as Srila Prabhupada instructed, and on special days like today, and Ekadashis and Ramnami and Janmashtami and so forth, and the appearance days of many of the Acharyas, minimum 25 rounds should be chanted with love. So again, it is very important. You don't want to just run through the rounds. You have to chant them very attentively with love, with devotion, concentrating and focusing on every word, pronouncing it nicely, hearing it nicely, and doing Nam Artha Chintana, meditating, Oh my dear Lord Krishna, Oh Mother Radha, Oh Lord Ram, Please engage me in your devotional service. So in this mood, when Prahlad Maharaj asked that he wants to serve his spiritual master, Lord Nasima Dev, he is very gladdened. So we hear from the prayers of Prahlad that we should take shelter at the lotus feet of Bhagwan and we seek for protection through engagement in devotional service, which makes us fearless, abhay, right? And we become even joyful. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Na Shochati Na Kaakshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhakti Labhate Param Bhagavan Krishna Arjun ko batate hain ke one who is on a Brahma Bhuta stage he does not lament about the past he does not aspire for the future because these are anxieties. So it's without anxieties without Kuntha. What is that? Vakuntha. So he actually is residing in Vakuntha. So even though right now Prahlad Maharaj is in Sutala planet, right, with his grandson Bali Maharaj, yet at the same time he is simultaneously in spiritual planet, in spiritual world as well as on Sutala planet. And both of them are Mahajanas, right? Bali Maharaj is also Daityaraj, he is the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj. And so they are constantly engaged in devotional service and carrying out their duties with their mind, body and words, constantly praying and, you know, singing the glories of the Lord and engaging in devotional service. So we learn so much from Prahlad Maharaj about his humble ways, his beautiful, simple ways. And that's why we hear again and again that devotees, when they are meek, when they are humble, they gratitude, they actually are more qualified. And that should be the purpose of knowledge, not to make someone proud, not to make someone run after name, fame and glories, but by engaging in devotional service, more strongly engagement in devotional service. Sometimes people ask, so what, they ask Srila Prabhupada, so when you chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra, what is next? You know, what, what comes after? And Srila Prabhupada said, well, after chanting, you do more chanting, right? That is the amazing, that's the uh, chain reaction that happens. But what changes is our heart. We are churning our heart. So in the beginning, yes, it is like little rocks, little difficult to churn. But as it becomes mellow, right? Sometimes we see butter, we take it out of the fridge and it's very hard. But then when we start churning the butter little, 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 the 
all the impurities they tend to come out the liquid comes out and then the butter becomes very smooth similarly when uh, you know from yogurt or dahi jab chan karte hai, how the butter comes out that process is also how the cream comes out that is also there so we are churning our heart by chanting of the holy name so that it becomes that sweet butter so that the butter thief would come and steal it away and we are also praying to the last the Siva Dev to appear on the lotus of our heart to destroy all these material desires they are like Hrinakashipu and so that we can further engage in devotional service and progress in our spiritual life so these are the important lessons that we learn you know from Prahlad Maharaj's example and Lord Nasima Dev's pastimes Hare Krishna so this is where we would like to end today's session thank you so much for joining in today Nasimha Dev Chaturdashi ki jai, Nasimha Dev Appearance Day ki jai, Srila Prabhupad ki jai, Srila Bhagavad Pad ki jai, Nant Kauti Vaishnava Vind ki jai, Nitai Go Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. If you have any questions, I have a few minutes, I can quickly take any question that you may have. I'm going through it. Hare Krishna, dear viewers. So, Ajiva Tata Prabhupada ne, uh, Lord Nursing Dev Appearance Day for uh, ye jo wonderful lessons we shared kiye hai with emphasis on the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj. So, uh, Nursing Dev Chatur Dashi ki jai. Agar aapke kuch questions ho, to aap comments mein isi wakt likh sakte hai. Prabhu ji ke paas few minutes hai. Uh, before we end the session, uh, you can go ahead and type your question. We'll check for another minute or so. And if there are no more questions, we'll end this session. Hare Krishna, Gita Ji, Niru Ji, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu Ji, Nidhi Gupta Ji, Aap Sabhi Ko Bohat Bohat uh, Dhanyavad for your active participation. Mahendra Gupta Ji, Mahantesh Ji, Anish Singh Ji, Vandana, Bangya, Love Singh, Akshay, uh, Abhishek, Mahadev, Sagar, Prabhot, Kishan, Sabuj, Prabhu Ji. There are many, many viewers from India and USA and all over the world. Savika, Bahad Bahad Dhanivad, Monica Grover Ji, Katehe, Haribo, thank you, Mataji and Prabhuji. Or Niruji Neka, it was a wonderful session, Prabhuji, Gita Ji, Navy, Kafi appreciation expressed Kia hai with her beautiful comments all throughout. Narendra Lama Ji, maybe presence Kia participation Rakha throughout. So, dear devotees, um, we appreciate your participation. Prabhuji, I think we can end the session now. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srila Bhagavad Pad ki jai, Nant Kodivashram, Vind ki jai, Nitai Go Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Hare Krishna.